America. It can't happen here. So J. Edgar Hoover said that, that it was the conspiracy so monstrous that people don't even believe it exists. And to anybody, if they'll just look at the evidence, that 9-11 was an inside job, right? A lot of you thought that Katrina was an accident. When there's people, have, there's, there's people of color that have been interviewed from the Ninth Ward to tell you even after the storm left, when the storm was quieting, they heard a noise. The levees were blue, man. They blew the levees. Then you're at George Bush. Flew past New Orleans and looked at the flood. And flew by, didn't even touch down. You had our people clamming out of cylinders, making holes from their cylinders to get refuge on the roof. You had our people floating on water, dead, diseased water. Had us living like caged animals as refugees, publicized for the whole earth. You didn't even call these people Americans. You called them refugees. And by calling them refugees, they had no American rights under the Constitution. They were not allowed to leave their area. Those that could escape tried to go over a bridge and were stopped by deputies. This was a test for what they're going to do nationwide with the next fake attack that this government will plan on its own country. You are the terrorists. Right now in Mississippi, Tennessee, and Arkansas, they're running martial law tests. They can pull you over, and they're testing how to detain people under martial law. They are interrogating these people, holding them for days without letting them call their families. Y'all don't understand what's about to happen, man. And when, when, when that happened in Katrina, who, who received all the power? All the power went to the state, from the state to the government, on the FEMA. So all the laws under FEMA, the Federal Emergency uh, 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 Management Association, all the power goes to FEMA. FEMA just signed a, over a three billion dollar contract with the government to do what? To prepare for a martial law that they, 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 they didn't even tell you about. That's why we came. We'll let you know, brothers and sisters, while you out here trying to get vanilla duchess and shaking your behind, they got a plan to kill you. You notice in the 80s, I mean the 90s, they took bars, they, they put bars on all your subway systems. You don't believe me, go and check out your subways. The, the, the orange line and the green line, I mean the orange line and the blue line. Certain time at night they lock it. In a state of an emergency, they're going to, the, the, the U.S. Army and Blackwater will come to your neighborhoods and escort you to your trains and lock the doors. They will do express trains down to the Navy base here in Philadelphia. They're going to do this all over the earth. Here's the FEMA detention camp train right now. It's three stories high. Why do FEMA have this train? Why are they not telling the American public what these trains are all about? You think the Jewish Holocaust was something? That was child's play compared to what they're going to do to you. Another thing, hold this for me, brother. Somebody tell me why I'm looking at apparently all contingency are being taken care of. Photographers have snapped pictures of an estimated half a million plastic coffins in Georgia. Why do they have 
plastic coffins waiting in the middle of nowhere. Georgia? Why? Huh? Why? We're gonna show you. They, this is the government now. They have these coffins just sitting there. People have snuck in and took pictures of the army planning a mass slaughter on their own people. Uh -huh. On their own people. I'm gonna read this. It says the United States government have what they call a red or blue list. Those on the red list will be woken up at 4 a.m. and taken to the camps and probably killed. There's concentration camps. In 1984, under Ronald Reagan, he signed a bill that turned the King Alfred plan into Rex 84. North, in your work at the... Uh... NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman, I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area, so may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? I was particularly concerned, Mr. Chairman, because I read in Miami papers and several others that there had been a plan uh, developed by that same agency, a contingency plan in the event of emergency that would suspend the American Constitution. And I was deeply concerned about it and wondered if that was the area in which he had worked. I believe yeah, it was. Yeah, I most, I to get yeah, I most respectfully request that that matter not be touched upon at this stage. 
If we wish to get into this on certain arrangements can be made for an executive session. And tragically, the only member who got close was Jack Brooks, and he was stopped by the chairman. A shadowy government with its own Air Force, its own Navy, its own fundraising mechanism, and the ability to pursue its own ideas of the national interest, free from all checks and balances, and free from the law itself. Even President Clinton talked about the shadow government as seen in this transcript. Unfortunately, the actual audio is near impossible to find. His actual quote was, Sarah, there's a government inside the government and I don't control it. It's pretty uh, point blank, don't you think? Yet nobody raised any questions whatsoever when he made that quote. I would have, if I was there, asked many questions following that.